Um, I'm Lauren Liss. I'm the President and CEO of Mass Development, and I'm so excited to be here today with all of you um, to make the announcements regarding a really important program to cities and towns across the Commonwealth, which is the Site Readiness Program. Thank you to Lieutenant Governor Polito for being here in your hometown. Um, we're so appreciative of everything that you do for us, not only for spearheading and headlining this event, but for your unwavering commitment and support of economic development in communities across the Commonwealth. Thank you very much. Um, I also want to thank uh, Chairman and Secretary Jay Ash, who unfortunately could not be here today. And um, for Secretary Ash, he really considers the Site Readiness Program one of his babies, and it's really only being completely felled by the flow, um, which would keep him from, from being in the, at this event. I also want to um, acknowledge Representative Hannah Kane and Senator Moore for being here today. Thank you very much. Um, and I would now like to invite up uh, Moira Miller, who is the Vice Chair of the Shrewsbury Board of Selectmen. Um, I'd like to also thank the entire town of Shrewsbury for hosting us today. And um, Vice Chair, if you'd like to come up and make your remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to be here um, this afternoon on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. I know my colleague Beth Cassavant is here. I believe my colleague Jim Kane is here. We're on his way. Um, um, and our, our other colleagues, uh, Selectman John LeBeau and Selectman Mo DiPaolo, send their regrets. They would have loved to be here, but they have work commitments. I also would like to welcome back home um, our Lieutenant Governor, Karen Polito. We're always pleased to have you with us. And uh, thank you to Mass Development, uh, State Representative Kane, um, Senator Moore. I'd also like to um, recognize our Town Manager, Kevin Mizikar, is with us, as well as our Assistant Town Manager, Kristen Loss, and um, various members of the um, department heads from the Town of Shrewsbury. I'd also like to welcome the representatives here from the uh, communities of Chelmsford, Chicopee, Gardner, Georgetown, Haverhill, Lawrence, New Bedford, Norwood, Somerset, Westfield, and Westover. If, and I have to ask, is Westover a town or is that Westover Air Force Base? It's uh, Air Force Base. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's, what I, that's what I thought being from Western Massachusetts, but I, I'd never heard of a town, so thank you for clarifying that. The site readiness grants that will be awarded today are important to each of our communities to help deal with the obstacles we all face developing sites. For example, here in Shrewsbury, the town purchased the former Allen property, which is now called Centec North, in 2002 in order to control the site's future use. And the Shrewsbury Development Corporation, the SDC, was formed then, and I, and I was negligent to, to recognize. We have representatives from our Shrewsbury Development Corporation here today as well. And the SDC was formed to oversee the care of this property with the goal of bringing commercial industrial development to the site so that we could provide that long-term economic benefit to our residents and our taxpayers. While the timeline for development of this property is, is slower than anyone anticipated in 2002, Progress has been made in preparing the site and continuing to move the process forward. Since purchasing the property, the SDC town officials and the town meeting have taken several steps to attract business development. Um, for example, the property was rezoned as an office research district in 2002, and this was a step towards implementing some of the land use recommendations from the 2001 plan, master plan. And then Shrewsbury um, has adopted Chapter 43D, which is the state's uh, expedited permitting provision. Um, and in doing so, the town qualified uh, for a Chapter 43D grant to prepare a master plan for the property. And then with the help of the WBDC and Beta Group, the SDC developed the master plan for this property. And they identified areas suitable for development as well as recognizing that there are some environmental and infrastructure difficulties, such as road widening and intersection improvements that are needed um, in that area. So then based on the master plan finding, Shrewsbury then amended the zoning overlay district associated with Centec Park North in order to accommodate a wider variety of businesses there. And Shrewsbury also designated the site as a priority development site through the 495 Metro West Compact project. So we've taken a, a series of st steps on that site, but obstacles still remain. And that's why we are so grateful um, to be here this afternoon 
to receive this grant, which will allow us to take that next step. So thank you to the Shrewsbury Development Corporation, Assistant Manager, uh, Town Manager Kristen Loss, and the Engineering and Planning Departments for their efforts in, in preparing and submitting this grant application. We look forward to working with Mass Development and the Office of Housing and Economic Development on the next steps, the survey, the design, and the permitting of the North Road at Centec Park North. And this will be a valuable next step to attract viable commercial development. Thank you also to Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito for being champions for state, city, um, town, municipal partnerships, such as the Site Readiness Fund. Uh, we're pleased that the Lieutenant Governor was actually able to be with us today. Um, we welcome her home, and it's now my pleasure to welcome um, to the podium Lieutenant Governor Polito. Well, thank you and welcome uh, to our hometown of Shrewsbury. It's great to see so many familiar faces and to see uh, our friends from other communities that have traveled to our hometown, which, of course, I am uh, so proud of. I started my public service uh, actually in the selectmen's room in the original uh, part of the building and continued my service at this very table. And it's where both Governor Baker and I started our, our public service in the roles as selectmen and where we really uh, developed an appreciation for the municipal decisions that are made and how important it is to have a strong and reliable partner in state government. Uh, a partner that is not directive but supportive and a partner that encourages and inspires municipal officials and local planners to plan out and decide what they want for their future, not the state dictating the terms for the communities of this commonwealth. Uh, so in Shrewsbury, I can attest uh, to the fact that there is very strong leadership here. And uh, Moira, thank you for uh, outlining uh, how this community has planned uh, out, uh, proper zoning and taking advantage of the tools that are in the toolkit. Uh, for expedited permitting and to then think about a parcel of land that was acquired uh, quite some many years ago and now at a point to hopefully develop uh, more strategic planning for and lead to uh, development that can contribute uh, tax dollars and uh, perhaps jobs or housing or whatever it is that you choose to do back into the community. So I want to also acknowledge my friends and partners in government, uh, Senator Moore and Hannah Kane, who I believe was on uh, the Development Corp and had a lot to do with uh, the acquisition and thinking on the Allen property. And Senator Moore, being uh, a native of central Massachusetts, both of you are very strong and reliable uh, assets and advocates for the Central Mass Delegation, working with the Metro West Partnership and, and other organizations to certainly make sure that this area of the state gets its fair share uh, from uh, the decision making that takes place uh, in Boston. So today, for us, it's a, a, a great day to talk about a program that our administration actually started when we uh, initiated the economic development bill that was signed by our colleagues in the legislature, it passed and then signed by the governor in 2016. And in that bill, we contained $15 million for the initiative around site readiness. And it came after a lot of uh, listening uh, from the Secretary Ash and members of our administration to you, to local officials, who told us that there were uh, opportunities that were not fully being taken advantage of in communities and regions of the Commonwealth. And if that there could be some seed dollars, some initial planning dollars available to communities to think about taking uh, parcels uh, that need to either be rezoned or need to be branded and marketed for higher and better uses, that could really help us. So that's how we were able to embed $15 million into the economic development bill and we started the site readiness program. Uh, last year we were able to grant $1.8 million for uh, 14 grants to 11 communities and the inaugural round in um, Orange. And today it's uh, my pleasure to be able to announce $2.5 million in funding to 12 communities under the Site Readiness Program. So congratulations to all of the 12 communities who, who are receiving funds today. What I love about uh, these funds, uh, they are 
uh, catalyzing more economic development in all regions of the Commonwealth. I spend a lot of time uh, traveling on the roadways and byways and backways of, of Massachusetts. And I see and hear from local officials about uh, the need to just create more opportunity everywhere. And I, I really believe that uh, the leadership that exists in a community coupled with the vision and the planning that community leaders are doing, when that comes together in a community, that's a very strong uh, level of asset. You need both. You need good decision makers, you need good planning, and you need that vision, and then you need resources. And you will see private investment being made in communities and state investment when the leadership and the planning is done to set that community up for that opportunity. So this, this program is cr critical to doing that. I also know that a lot of these dollars are being uh, used toward industrial parks and commercial ac activity, which is also very important for a community. I often ask, what is the mix of taxpayers in a community? Sometimes you're in a community like Shrewsbury, which is largely a bedroom community. And it's really important for a community like Shrewsbury to think about ways of expanding its tax base, growing the industrial and commercial taxpayers for obvious reasons. When you need to make improvements to school buildings or to municipal buildings or to infrastructure, it always falls on the local taxpayers to foot the bill. But if you can diversify the level of tax base, then you could be more successful in those investments in, in, in the community going forward. So for a whole lot of reasons, this program makes sense to us. We wanna thank you for uh, putting the application forward, uh, for working with mass development, and now these grants will, will lead you to the proper planning to put these, uh, these parcels into more productive use and get ready for the kinds of investment under some of our other programs like MassWorks uh, to then bring the infrastructure to these sites that can really attract uh, the higher and better uses that you uh, aspire to have in your community. I wanna thank Lauren Liss for her leadership at Mass Development. This is my first official event with you as our, our new director. Uh, she's no stranger to government being a former commissioner of DEP uh, in the late 90s. So she understands that uh, these endeavors are not easy, they're complicated. And uh, we, as a team, Mass Development and our Housing and Economic Development team work together with all of you uh, to make sure that uh, you can do your job even better for your community. So to the 12 communities today, congratulations. And uh, we look forward to continuing our good work together. I would like to introduce uh, Hannah and uh, Senator Moore, uh, if you'd like to both uh, say a few words, since we are in the hometown district and this is Hannah's hometown, and I know how familiar you are with this particular yes. uh, project. So with that, Hannah Kane and Senator Moore. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming here today, especially to Shrewsbury to do this announcement. It's great to end a Friday afternoon, although the Senator and I have one more meeting after this in Shrewsbury, but very happy to end our Friday here. Um, yesterday, I attended the 495 Metro West Partnerships uh, report and forum on the life sciences, and Secretary Jay Ash was there. And, and even though he was under the weather yesterday, um, one of the points that he made, and everyone in the audience agreed, is that the Baker Pluto administration has done a tremendous job of uh, ensuring that there is economic opportunity throughout the Commonwealth, not just in certain sectors, but really in every city and town, it's important that they be good public partners uh, with them in their endeavors to grow their own economic base. And I think that this, uh, the awards today and the ones that were done last year for this program are really evidence of that. Um, and I know that the Lieutenant Governor spends many days a week on the road uh, throughout the Commonwealth making sure that the intent of the Baker Pluto administration is being felt in all pockets. So thank you very much for your continued leadership in that aspect. Um, the Shrewsbury Development Corporation, I was actually the first president of it and served in that capacity for many years. Um, and I see some of my colleagues from the SDC who are here today. Um, this is a really important investment. Um, we have spent a lot of time and energy over the years in doing everything that we can as, a, as Vice Chair um, Moira Miller um, 
well documented. And, and yet, we're still at a point where we have to do a few more critical things before it can really be ready for prime time. And this investment will ensure that we can do that. Um, and it will make a significant difference in our town because we are not a town with enormous commercial industrial um, zoned area. And so ensuring that this 66 acre parcel um, can come on to our tax rolls is really important. Um, I also wanted to um, just say that um, for those of us in the legislature, being able to come out into our communities and talk about things that are important in the communities and to hear from our municipalities what's important to them and translate that back into Beacon Hill is really important. And again, um, serving now as we do, um, I think most people that we work with would agree that this administration hears more from us directly advocating for our cities and towns. They listen to what we're conveying that the cities and towns care about and they respond in a way that makes a difference. So thank you for that. Uh, not only your investment, but the way in which you approach the relationship with cities and towns. And I would turn it over to my colleague. Thank you, and thank you to lieutenant, excuse me, the lieutenant governor and the um, Baker administration. You know, as the lieutenant governor was speaking, um, I also served on the board of selectmen, and we're talking about the tax burden and how we're going to pay for infrastructure needs on the local level, and most of the concern you hear from the residents is the cost of their property tax. And the only way really to hold that tax down or the increase down is to expand our commercial base. And this is actually a um, very important uh, function, I think, of the state to be there to aid our city and towns in the growth of their infrastructure. Um, you know, we see the Massachusetts and I guess even in, uh, nationally, the economy is moving forward. We've got a great unemployment rate, um, but we can't stay there. Uh, we can't stand still. We have to make sure that we have uh, the infrastructure so that we continue forward. Um, you know, we always see the ups and downs in the economy. Well, only one way, the only way to really avoid those ups and downs is to continue the investment. I think the, um, with the legislature and the Baker Fleet Administration uh, providing this funding, um, I think it shows that we understand the needs of our municipalities and our communities and what we have to do to, to sustain that growth. Um, and more importantly, Coming from the Board of Selectmen, um, you know, as uh, Moira Miller was talking, everyone thinks when they look at a piece of uh, property, it's very easy to develop that property, and it's going to be quick and done within a week. She, when she uh, explained the process, that's just on the town end. Now you've got other investment in infrastructure need that, that comes, and we all know the pressures that our cities and towns are under for funding police, fire, school. Uh, roads. So I think this is the vital role that uh, government can play in assisting our, our communities in developing and marketing their property and continuing with the growth that, um, that is so vitally important. So thank you. I want to thank uh, Lauren and Mass Development, again, to the Baker Plea Administration and to the Town of Shrewsbury and the Shrewsbury Development Corp for their great work. Um, thank you and have a great weekend. <laughs> Um, and now, for the moment we have all been waiting for, um, thank you again for your remarks. And uh, while I was going to uh, announce our award grants in alphabetical order, I think there's some hometown advantage that should be um, brought to bear. So the first of the second rounding round of site readiness grants, I would like to call up and announce Centec Park North Project in Shrewsbury, please come up and accept your site readiness grant for $302,000. $302,000.
to alphabetical order. Um, our second site readiness grantee uh, goes to the Route 129 industrial area in Chelmsford with an award of $90,000. This grant will help fund a market study and strategic marketing for a largely built out industrial area in Chelmsford. Properties in the area are experiencing significant vacancies and site readiness funding will allow the town to address this issue. All right, and the next grant goes to Air Park South of Chicopee with an award of $255,200. The Westover Metropolitan District Corporation will use this grant to fund due diligence, master planning, and Massachusetts Environmental Permitting Act work for the new industrial park. And next, the Chicopee River Business Park in Chicopee, an award of $70,000. The West Mass Area Development will use funds for due diligence and master planning focused on advancing the build out of an existing industrial park. And our next site readiness grant to the town of Gardner for the Gardner Industrial Park, an award of $350,000. The city of Gardner will use funds for land acquisition, master planning and survey work at a new industrial park that was initially identified through a mass development funded planning effort. Gardner's existing industrial park has reached capacity and the new park will provide space for businesses to grow and expand. Next on our list in alphabetical order is the Town of Georgetown for the National Avenue site, an award of $50,000. Georgetown will use its site readiness funds for due diligence and a conceptual master plan for a 20-acre site adjacent to I-95. And next is the Town of Haverhill for the Broadway Business Park, a $50,000 site readiness grant. This grant will allow Haverhill to do due diligence and master planning at a privately owned piece of undeveloped land near I-495 that the city hopes to transform into a new business park. And to the Lawrence Community Works Mariner Building, the Lawrence CDC, uh, $50,000 site readiness grants uh, for the funding for a code compliance study for the first floor of its Mariner Building. Lawrence Community Works envisions leasing the first floor to light industrial users.
And moving south, the Whaling City Golf Course to the City of New Bedford for $100,000. The City of New Bedford will use its site readiness funds to complete MEPA studying and permitting and an ALTA survey. The project previously received $300,000 of site readiness funding in the first round of the program. And we were happy to accept this on behalf of <laughs> the city of Fall River. And I can just pocket that right now. Um, we will make sure that gets to them safely. Um, the next is to the town of Norwood, $150,000 site readiness grant for the Vanderbilt Avenue Business Park Project. The town will use its funds to design and potentially implement streetscape and wayfinding improvements to help address vacancy in an industrial area off of Route 1. And back down south to the town of Somerset for the Brayton Point Reuse Project, a $160,000 site readiness grant the town will use for master planning, environmental and waterways, specialized consulting services to support the town's improvements with the redevelopment of the former Brayton Point Power Station, a 307-acre property on Somerset's waterfront. And to round out our second round of site readiness grants to the town of Westfield, a $750,000 site readiness award for the Turnpike Industrial Park expansion. The city of Westfield will use its site readiness funds for the strategic acquisition of six plus acres of land adjacent to the Turnpike Industrial Site, including a single family home. The purchase will unlock development potential of approximately six additional acres. This project also previously received site readiness funding of $300,000 in our first round. So congratulations to all of um, our site readiness recipients. Um, and as the CEO of Mass Development, which is the state's finance and development authority, Mass Development provides a variety um, of different products in order to spur economic development across the, the, the Commonwealth, such as the products such as loans, tax exempt bonds, real estate services, all again to stimulate economy, the economy across Massachusetts. The site readiness program is only one of the many tools that we have. And we're so happy to be working with the Baker Polito administration, with Secretary Ash and his staff at HED um, to continue to make sure that we have as a Commonwealth an inventory of large, well-located and shovel-ready sites. Um, also importantly about this program is beyond the nice envelope and check that you're all receiving today, it's a great benefit by itself, but you're also receiving the continued commitment and support for mass development in terms of technical assistance. And if you don't know uh, the mass development team already, you will enjoy getting to know them. I'd like to introduce here today Ed Starzak from our Boston Real Estate Asset Management Group. Claire O'Neill <laughs> is also here from our Worcester office. And these are folks that you, if you're lucky enough to be working with them or our other staff day to day, um, will be your project managers, will be your partners, um, and will be available to continue to assist you as you do this great work. So thank you, congratulations, have a wonderful long weekend. Thank you.